Hello everyone, welcome to your 29th C++ Qt game tutorial. So let's just quickly pick up from where we left off. Now recall that the there was two problems with member functions of the hex class. The get is placed was not defined. Oh, but it is defined. Oh, no, 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 it's not. So get is placed, let's define it. This will return is placed. Okay, and also do set is placed and this will um, basically call is placed and set it to whatever you want to set it to now let's run and see if it works is placed undeclared identifier because it's called is placed with a d okay let's see if this works play now let's try to place a card oh we got a bug. So you see it that as soon as I click on one of these things, I get a bug. Um, now what's causing this is a, a pointer. So let's go see where the error lies. Okay, so I quickly went on a, a debugging streak and I found out that the problem was in the create new card method. Recall that the create new card method creates a new hex, makes it so that it's not placed, and then puts it on one of the decks. So after we create this card, we want to set the is placed to false because that's the definition of a, car of a card. So let's go ahead and run. And now we'll click play. And now it's player one's turn. If I try moving players two's cards, nothing happens. I'm clicking, nothing. And now let's try to move player one's card. Let's try placing it. There we go. Let's try now player one again. No, we can't because it's player two's turn. So there we go. And they can basically take turns placing their hexes um, onto the screen, just like that. OK, uh, so we're done with that part. Now, the next thing that we want to do is regenerate new cards as they're placing them onto the screen. Actually, before even doing that, let's make it so that when we uh, try to move a card and then if we don't want to move it then if we right click it should move back rather than that way so now we need to check which click we did uh, let's go back in the hex class and then mouse press event or we'll handle in the game class so we'll go in the game class and we'll make a mouse press event Q mouse event So what do we want to do? Um, basically, we want to check if it's a left click or a right click. If it's a left click, we want to basically do what we usually do, which is place it. And if it's a right click, we want to move the card back to its original position. So make right click, return card to place to original position. OK, so if the event button, so if the button that was clicked was the right button, then what do we want to do is we want to check another thing. We want to check if there is a card to place, first of all. Okay, and if there is a card to place, then we want to return that card. So, card to place, set position to original position. Okay. And uh, now we want to set card to place the pointer to no because we return that card. And then we just want to get out of this. We're done. But otherwise, if that does not execute, then we're going to assume that it is a left click and we just want the regular behavior of the QGraphics view, which is to pass it on to the underlying hex. And the underlying hex will handle it. So QGraphics view. Uh, mouse press event and uh, we'll take a Q mouse. Uh, it takes an event. Let's run it and see if that works. Okay, now let's say we want to cancel. There we go, it goes back. So if we want to place it, we can place it. And if we want to cancel, we just right click and it goes back. Okay, we did that. Now let's go ahead and when you uh, make it so that when you place a card, uh, it regenerates a new one. 
So we'll just go ahead and after we place it, we'll create a new card. So we'll go in the hex uh, or the game class and then we'll go in the uh, uh, place cards member function or place card. Okay, so before making it the next player's turn, we want to basically replace the placed card with a new one. And we will simply create a new card here. So we have a function for that, create a new card for who? Well, whoever's turn it just was. Get yeah, whose turn. Okay, and then we switch it to the next player. And now we should regenerate cards. So play, let's place a card. There we go, we generate a new card. Let's place a card, we generate a new card. There you go. And uh, there we go. Okay, so, so we have successfully completed our task of allowing the players to place hexes on the board. Let's do a quick recap of everything here. So let me just go ahead and uh, you can skip the remaining of this tutorial if you got how this whole thing works. But if not, we're going to do a quick recap of the, how the whole thing works. So basically, we have this image of the board. And um, we needed to, uh, I'll put this a little bit lower, we needed to keep track of a couple of things. First of all, we needed to keep uh, track of w whether a certain hex was placed or not placed. So we just gave it two attributes, the hex class. And if it was not placed, it was a card. If it was placed, it was a hex. And then we also gave each hex, uh, so let's see. So each hex was either placed, and if it was placed, it's a hex. And if it was not placed, it's a card. And then we gave it an owner, and this will determine the color. And then we had a set owner member function that changed the owner and color. Okay, so that we know that about the hex. Now, when we clicked on a card, uh, we basically made this pointer, card to place, point to the clicked card. And then we made that click card, made the clicked card follow the mouse. And we did this inside the Q Graphics views uh, or the game classes mouse move event. We just made it follow the mouse. And then we, uh, I'll go ahead and start writing right here. And then we check that if Basically, uh, if a card was following the mouse and you click on a hex, not a card, so if you click on one of these when, you, when, you have, when this is following you, then we want to replace. So we basically replace the hex, make sure it's neutral first, because we only want to replace neutral hex with the card to place. And then we simply created a new card using our create new card member function. And uh, we switch the players. Uh, so we set next player's turn. And that's basically a high level overview of what we did. So this demonstrates to you guys how you go from a, a planning phase like this into the actual implementation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye bye.